Hey everyone! So this video might honestly be a bit of a struggle. You can probably hear from my voice that I'm still fairly sick. I got sick like last Tuesday and I've been out for about a week. I'm doing okay now but I'm still coughing an absolute metric ton. It's like difficult to get more than four or five sentences out so there might be more cuts in this video than usual but it's just what we have to deal with. The reason I couldn't wait to fully recover is because of this article that was published on Polygon on the 3rd of October. When I saw this thing I was like I have to make a video about it. Unfortunately last week when it actually came out I was like literally too sick to do YouTube. Uh, it was the last thing on my mind. But now that I'm a bit better I just have to talk about this because this I think is peak gaming journalism 2022. The article is titled Elden Ring's Melania embodies From Software's problems with women. The game's strongest boss betrays the developer's biggest weakness. Now I know, I know, I know, you might be looking at the title, you might be looking at this video and you're like, uh oh, Mr. Sketchhead is taking the channel down the incel upgrade path. Don't worry, it's absolutely not about that. This channel is not going to become one of those reactionary channels that just has like feminist owned in every video title. But this article is so absolutely rambly and so doesn't make any point that I just had to discuss it. Because even if it did have a coherent point, it's not presented well. And I am a fan of FromSoft games, even though I have my issues with some of them. And I will hold out that there is no intentional malice behind any of the characterizations they do. And the way this article tries to frame it as sort of like some sexist intentional like incel baiting thing is first of all a huge stretch and second of all a little bit disingenuous. So let's take a look at the points that this article makes but before we go into that I do have to show a little bit if you do enjoy this video and you like what you're seeing do give this video a like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications when I'm not too sick to function I do stream twice a week and I do make videos once a week similar to this. Reviews, discussions etc etc. Also I guess follow my Twitter if you want more hot takes because I might just become a Twitter hot takes poster. Anyways let's take a look. So the actual article starts out okay it just gives a bit of an exposition on Melania, her boss fight, how to get to her etc etc. It's when we get a couple of paragraphs down that things start falling apart a little bit right here. Melania exemplifies the way FromSoft writes women in its games. Whether bosses or NPCs you meet in the wild, these women have a shared condition. They exist in tragically declined worlds, sharing a specific brokenness, disfigurement, abandonment and loss. I mean to this point I would say uh, it doesn't matter whether a character is a woman or a man. The entire theme of FromSoft games is that worlds are broken and falling apart. Personally I would say it's a trope that now 7 games in is a little bit overused. I sincerely wish they will switch it up on their next game but it really has nothing to do with whether a character is a woman or a man because FromSoft worlds just suck and everybody is kind of miserable within them. They are afflicted by gender and the cure for when they are obstacles instead of mutely helpful is for the player to enact succinct violence. Now this is where we start to get into the problematic part of this article. First of all, I truly hate when articles just throw random words together into sentences that make no sense and they make no attempt to extrapolate on what they actually mean. Someone tell me please, maybe I'm not smart enough. What the hell does afflicted by gender mean? What the hell does that mean in the context of FromSoft characters? Because to this point I would argue that again this is presented in a very disingenuous manner because there are plenty of women characters in FromSoft games who do not fall into the categories outlined in this article. Sure there are a lot of characters that can be classified as mutely helpful although again this I would say is a fairly common trope and something that is a little bit overused. However, there are plenty of women characters who fall outside of this category. Lucatil of Mira, the Crow Lady from Bloodborne, the other warrior lady, I forget her name, the, the Moon sort of Huntress from Dark Souls 3. 
Henri, if you're playing as a male character in Dark Souls 3, none of these characters fall into the mutely helpful category. All of these characters have their own ambitions, their own stories, and their own purpose within the world. And to present it as just a binary of them either being mutely helpful or you having to straight up kill them is just not true. And the article does go into detail. It mainly talks about the sort of Firekeeper archetype in FromSoft games. The Emerald Herald, the Firekeeper, Ronnie the Witch, although I would very much uh, say that Ronnie the Witch does not fall into this category again, because Ronnie the Witch again has her own motivations and does have an effect on the world, and she is definitely not in the category of being mutely helpful to the player. And of course, the doll and Maiden in Black, I do appreciate that Maiden in Black got a shout out because she is the top waifu out of all the games. And I know immediately I said waifu and I marked myself. But again, I think instead of necessarily looking into this archetype too deep, I think it really does come down to the fact that, and I love these games, but I fully admit that FromSoft are not the best storytellers. They are great at building lore and great at building worlds. They are, I would argue, a little bit less good at building stories. And I think the fact that this sort of pejoratively titled Quiet Waifu, which the article talks about, I think is really down to more of FromSoft sticking to a formula rather than any sort of like malicious intent on having, oh, our games need to have a submissive waifu, otherwise the players are going to go into a rage. But the article does continue with this because essentially the main conclusion it makes is that because Melania breaks this trend and that she is difficult, it's the reason why people hate her. And since February, people have been in a constant rage and just going off on Melania because they just can't bear that there is a difficult female boss and it's beating them. Melania's boss fight is punishingly difficult and the audience's hostile and competitive attitudes about it are often steeped in gendered toxicity. Now, bringing up the fact that Melania is a contentious boss, again, is mischaracterized in this article. Melania doesn't piss people off because she's a woman. I'm sure there are people out there for who this is true, and it's pretty sad that there are people like that. However, the main issue people have with Melania is the mechanics themselves. It has little to do with who Melania is as a character, and more to do with how Melania's gameplay fits into Elden Ring. And you know, I fought Melania. I really, really struggled against her with my sorcerer character. I didn't fly into an incel rage and start just like, rage posting on Twitter about it. But I do hold the opinion that Melania does have issues mechanically, mechanically, I want to point out. I think this is the point where the article muddles the water. It's arguing that people are angry at Melania because it's a woman character. Instead, people are mad at Melania because she doesn't necessarily fit well into Elden Ring as a boss. People have beaten her, She's beatable, but I do think she has issues gameplay-wise. That has nothing to do with who she is. If she was a three-headed dragon, but played the same way, the exact same issues would be cropping up. Plus, I would argue to the points that this article makes that in a game where you are allowed complete free control over what character you play, a lot of these points are invalidated because you can play whoever you want. The main character, the player character, has the most agency over the world. They are the avatar for the player, and you can play anyone. You can be a woman, you can be a man, you can play any archetype, you can switch on the fly using the rebirth mechanic. To say that there are no women characters in FromSoft games who actually have any agency is again false, because the player themselves has the agency. The bravado about beating Melania makes sense. She evokes the idea of virginal warriors like Joan of Arc or Brienne of Tarth. Of course, they have to bring Brienne in here. Her purity and strength existing in a place beyond femininity. Everything about her is hostile and taunts the player. When faced with a difficult, defiant woman who has never been beaten, men cannot help but fantasize about being the one to take her down. Again, we come back to the main counter-argument I'm trying to make here. 
in that this has nothing to do with Melania being a woman. FromSoft has built their entire franchise on having difficult bosses and getting people to want to take them down. Whether you're talking about Medir in Dark Souls 3, Sir Alon in Dark Souls 2, whatever, Orphan of Cause in Bloodborne, none of this has anything to do with the character's gender or who the character is. Melania is the hardest boss in the game. People want to take her down. It's not because people are like emasculated by her, it's because the entire game is built on achievement. It's built on conquering adversity and overcoming difficult bosses. That's it. There is no deeper meaning behind who the boss is. People will always try to take down the most difficult boss in any game in increasingly ridiculous ways, I might add, no matter what that boss is characterized as. Using this argument, every single super boss in Final Fantasy games could be problematic. It's like, oh yeah, people just want to take down Omega Weapon because they are completely emasculated by its 2.5 million HP or something like that. That is absolutely not true. And by the way, I do want to shout out this article's use of Twitter because it talks about how often people call Melania a bitch. And you click on the link and it's just a Twitter search for the words Melania and bitch. I mean, again, this is peak 2022 games journalism. This article doesn't even do what people usually do, which is get like four tweets with a combined like count of 11 and use it to prove their point. They just straight up link a Twitter search. And the most ridiculous thing is even if you scroll down to like before the article, because most of the new results are about the article itself, there are barely any tweets that fit what the author is trying to say. And even the ones that do have like one like. It's absolutely ridiculous. To extrapolate from this that there is a huge problem with people being sexist against female characters in FromSoft is a stretch to say the least. And the article does go on, it talks about FromSoft's narrative choices, Radon, the cutscene, all of that, which when you think about it, if you take out all of the fluff at the start and end of this article, you would be left with about two paragraphs worth of actual materials where the author is trying to prove a point. I'm guessing that Polygon does have a character count and they were trying to desperately fill it. Listen, I've always held this belief that Elden Ring for some reason seems to attract bad takes. And this bad take might be the worst of the worst out of all of them. To be honest with you, I do not necessarily disagree with looking into games and finding deeper meaning behind games from a thematic point. I mean, that's exactly what most of the lore channels do, FromSoft games from a lore perspective. However, I do think that FromSoft games in general are too mechanically driven and not very story driven. And to extrapolate any sort of grand idea about sexism and the community's attitude is a bit of a stretch, which again, I think this article's contents really prove because man does it seem like the author was struggling to make any sort of point. The Twitter search linked really just proves that. So I don't know man, I really think that in any game which allows this much character creation and freedom to play as whoever you want, most of the arguments here fall out the window. Plus, aside from the main waifus, as the article puts it, which is more of a character archetype, there are plenty of female characters all over FromSoft games with agency. And to paint Melania as this, like, insulbating obstacle is just not true. She's the hardest boss. No matter who the hardest boss is, people are going to be mad about it and people are going to be trying to take him, her or it down. It doesn't matter. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here because I really am losing my voice. Again, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like. When I'm not very sick, I do try to stream twice a week and I do try to upload once a week. That hasn't happened, unfortunately, because of this state, but I am getting better now, so I'll be back into the swing of things soon. Anyways, thanks for watching, peace out, and goodbye.